So I don't know about you, but uh, when it comes to like summertime, I, summer happens to be my favorite season. Uh, I'm not, I like snow, but I don't love winter, hello? I just like, I like when it's green outside. One of my favorite things about spring and summer is just the opportunity to plant some flowers. I like planting flowers. I just, I like going to Lowe's and walking around and just looking at the plants and thinking of things I can plant, all right? Because I'm like, I would plant that and plant that and plant that. And then when you get the flowers and you bring them home, you're so excited. Uh, does anybody else like this? Anybody? I know there's lots of people. I know you're with me. Some of you are like, everything I plant dies, so I quit planting things a long time ago. Uh, I just want to, you know, I just want to speak a new day into you. Maybe you could try again. <laughs> but I, I don't know about you, but I get more excited about actually planting the flowers than keeping them alive, okay? So... It's easy to plant them. It's kind of hard to keep them alive. And so we'll plant them at the house and it just looked beautiful. And then like three weeks later, like everything's dead because we forgot to water everything. But it was exciting to plant them. And I guess that's why you get flowers is just so you can have the joy of planting them. Not really, but uh, that's how it goes at our house. And uh, I, just, I really do, I love planting things because there's just something cool about seeing things grow and seeing the life that comes out of that. But tonight I want to talk to you from the subject, the power of being planted. Do you know, scripturally speaking, there is such a grace that comes to your life and such a power that's really only available to you when you're planted. And I'm talking specifically about being planted in the house of God. Now, I think for maybe you're here and you're like, well, I'm here on the Wednesday night prayer meeting and, and, and I definitely think that's awesome. And I think God, anytime you say, God, I'm gonna carve time out of my week and I'm gonna get in your house and get in your presence, God blesses that. But I want you to ask yourself tonight, whether you're here in the room or you're watching online, am I planted in the house? Because there is a power for available for you that comes on your life when you say, God, I'm going to be planted. Yeah. We're going to be looking at a psalm. It's a, it's Charles Spurgeon, the great prince of preachers, called it one of the pearls of the psalms. A psalm that's just one of the, the shining. So you, th you know, you think of Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, famous psalm. You can maybe think of when you think of great psalms, you might think of Psalm 103. And that's where I'll bless the Lord at all times. You might think of Psalm 119 that just has such great truth in it and such a practical psalm about being in the word. But I'm telling you, if you want a psalm that's going to encourage you, then you just need to look up Psalm 84. I want you to look at it with me, the power being planted. It says this in verse 4, Blessed are those who dwell in your house, for they're ever singing your praise. Now this word dwell is really important. It, it, it speaks of, it's, it's not just a passing by, those who pass by your house or those who kind of consider the house of God, but blessed, happy, there's a grace on their life, those who dwell in your house for they're ever praising you. If you want to live a blessed life, if you want to live a life with power, if you want to live a life that has continued grace on it, then that comes when you say, God, I want to dwell in your house. God, I want to make the house of God the place where I'm at. The house of God is a place where I'm like, man, my heart is in the house. My heart, that's where I want to be. Now, I don't know about you, but when I hear the word dwell, I kind of get a little bit of a Shakespearean thought, you know, like, uh, happy are those who dwell in your house. You know, I don't know. That's the best Shakespeare voice I got, all right? That's my British accent. So, so I'm, I'm trying to break you out of dwell, okay? So what does dwell mean? Well, the Hebrew word for dwell here actually means to sit or even to marry, there's a permanence. I, I love the thought of Mary because when you're married, there's a permanence in Scripture that, that when you, it's, it's the place you are and you are going to be. Yeah. It's not just something you just do every once in a while. It's the place where you're planted. In fact, uh, there's a psalm that says this in Psalm 97, 92. They, they are planted in the house of the Lord and they flourish in the courts of God. So when you're planted, you're flourishing. Blessed are those who dwell. 
And so when I think of plants, and I actually have like a plant up here, I want to, I, I think this will really bring this alive to somebody because when you think of, well, I'm in the house of God. So are you seeing blessing in your life? Are you planted in the house? Or are you just there? Because when you go to plant something and I have this beautiful flower, I don't know the name of it. It's a zinnia. Thank you, Mark Wright. You are amazing. Everybody online, give Mark Wright a fire emoji in the chat. This is a zinnia. Now, I want you to think about this. If we're going to plant this zinnia in this pot here, there's a difference between going there. Now, the difference really is there's a difference between being positioned and being planted. There's a difference between it being in the pot and being planted. And I think that's where the light bulb hopefully comes on for you. Because I can position this in the pot, but if I don't plant it, it's not gonna get the nutrients it needs. It's not gonna get, it's not gonna grow. It's not going to flourish. And the, the mistake could be, well, it's in the pot, so it should be fine. But it, until it's planted, it's not going to get what it needs. And that is where it comes down to us as believers when we say, you know what, I don't want to just be positioned in the house. That's where you're like, hey, I'm here. All right. I made it. But are you planted? Do you come to the house with the roots of this zinnia saying, you know what, I need to soak up everything here. I need to get my roots in deep. I need to be leaning into what the Lord's going to say. I need to be here week in and week out because you know what, if this falls over when it's not planted or I'm moving it around, it's going to, it's going to damage the plant or it's going to be a problem for the plant or it could even fall out of the plant. All right. But if it's planted, it's set no matter what the weather, no matter what happens, it's ready. It's going to be okay. It's going to be stable. That's the difference between being, being positioned and being planted. But I love what the scripture says that when they're planted, they flourish. Go back to Psalm, the other Psalm, Psalm 84. It says, blessed are those who dwell, who think of planted, they're married, they're set in, they're saying, this is where I'm going to be. Those are the ones who are blessed. They're planted. They have the dirt in there. They have the water in there. I'm going to plant this real quick. This is a giant shovel. All right. This is the biggest hand shovel I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Greg knew us how to get a big shovel. We're going to plant this guy. But we're just going to get the dirt around it. Because this is where this wants to be. We're going to get it all up in here. Look at that. Look at him getting planted. Let's see. Watch this. Look. Oh, no. I was going to put it in the water. Um, we'll just... Cameron, can you come up here and hold this mic? Give Cameron a hand. But, but watch this, you know, I kind of picture as I'm like doing this, this is you saying, God, I want to be in your house, but I don't want to just come in, you know, when I feel like it. I don't want to just come in on the days where it works with my schedule. I don't want to just come in, God, when I'm in trouble. I don't want to just come in when it's storming. God, I want to be planted day after day week after week, God, I'm going to be here because God, I want to become the person you are calling me to be. And I want to walk in your blessing. And God says, thank you, Cameron. Give me a hand. Give me a hand again. God says, when you're planted in my house, that's where you're going to flourish. And so then it comes down to, are you valuing the house? And are you coming here saying, God, I am here and I'm going to be here and I'm going to keep coming because I want to open the channel of my heart to receive from you. I love that it says they're ever praising you. You know, I, that, you know what makes that cool is praise is describing the greatness of God. And you might think of that in this sense. Well, I guess because they're at the house, they're praising God. No, 
When you're in the house, God, there's a blessing that comes to your life and you begin to see God working in your life. You begin to hear God speaking to you because you're planted. And then you begin to say, wow, the light bulbs come on. God is working in my life in a greater way. God is moving in my life in a way I never would have thought could have happened. And I, all of a sudden you start saying, man, I have a lot to praise God for. I've seen God do this. I've seen God do this. I've seen God do this, but it all starts when you're planted. That praise starts when you're planted. God's gonna start giving you things that you're saying, God, I see how you're working now that I'm planted. But are you planted? Are you planted? Is there there roots down? Are you planted? Do you come in with an expectation? Are you planted? Do you come in ready to receive? Because if you're planted, God's, that's going to be a blessing and you're going to be able to begin to praise him. You're going to begin to see him work. Secondly, are you, there's power when you're planted in worship. It says this, blessed are those whose strength is in you and whose hearts are the highways to Zion. Now it sounds super artistic, doesn't it? Are the highways to Zion. But what it's saying is, but when it says blessed are who strengthens you, it, I, I want you to notice again that there's a correlation to being in, when you're in, blessed are those who dwell in, and the result that happens. You're blessed. When you're in the house, you're blessed. When your strength is in God, you're blessed. What does it mean to have your strength in God? It means not just that you're receiving your strength from God, but that your strength is in God, that you're giving God your best strength, that you're giving God your best attention. You want to receive from God. You want to get the blessing from God that God has for you. His desire is for relationship with you. His desire is for you to interact with him. When you walk into a prayer meeting, I know you might be like, man, I'm here because I need to receive from the Lord. And God is so excited to bless people. But you have to remember, this is an interaction. This is a relationship that where God is saying, you know what? This isn't just a one way street. This isn't just my blessing coming down. This is you interacting with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and you saying, God, I'm here definitely with things that I need for you to do, but God, I wanna stop and I wanna give you my best strength, my best attention, my best focus, my best worship. And then all of a sudden, that's when the blessing comes down. I think, This is really cool, this quote from Charles Spurgeon, specifically about this psalm. He says this, The blessedness of sacred worship belongs not to the half-hearted, the listless worshipers, but to those who throw all their energies into it. Neither prayer nor praise nor the hearing of the word will be pleasant or profitable to the person who have left their hearts behind them. So if you're not getting much out, then you have to say, am I giving my strength to this? Because when you give your strength to the Lord in worship, when you say, God, I want to lean in. I want to be there. God, if you're doing something, I want to be listening. God, if you're speaking, I want to be ready. God, if you're, if you're moving, God, I want to be swept up. Then you have to say, God, I'm going to give you my strength. God, I'm going to give you, I've I've come in not just to receive, but to give. And what happens when you do that is your heart literally becomes a pathway to Zion. You know what Zion is? Zion's another word for Jerusalem. But when the writer's saying this, it's talking about the place where God dwells. Their heart becomes a highway to Zion. You know, you think of a highway, a highway has two lanes, sometimes four, but, or six or eight. It's like this guy knows nothing about highways, all right? (laughs) But one set of traffic's going one way, one set of traffic's going the other way. There's a story in the Old Testament where Jacob is running from his brother Esau, and he stops at a place called Bethel, which is the house of God, and he lays down and goes to sleep, and he's sleeping on a rock for his pillow, just interesting Bible facts. And he lays down and he has this vision 
It's called Jacob's Ladder. Maybe you've heard of Jacob's Ladder, but it was literally a stairway where, you know, angels, the angels of God were going down and going up, going down and going up. And I think that's a beautiful picture of what happens when our hearts become a highway to Zion. Because maybe you need to be blessed tonight. Maybe you do need the strength of God tonight. Maybe you are like, man, I need my strength from you, God. And when I think of my strength in you, God, I'm like, I don't know how much strength I have to give, but I just wanna encourage you, if you give your strength to the Lord, you put your hope in God and you say, God, I, God, I may not have much, but I'm going to worship you. I'm not, I may not have much, but I'm going to give all my attention for this moment to you. I'm going to set down what's happening outside of here. And God, that may be a concern to me. And I understand that you, it's on your heart as well. But God, for a moment, I'm going to give you praise. I'm going to thank you for the good things you've done in my life. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to give you my best strength. Then my heart becomes a highway to Zion. Oh, and then all of a sudden, the strength, as you send that strength up, strength comes down from heaven and say, God says, you know what? That's a person who's now connected to my heart. They are a pathway to Zion and they sent their strength up. I'm going to send some strength down. I know what they need and I know they want relationship with me. So I'm going to send some strength down. I love that. Your heart becomes a pathway. You know, a highway connects people. Your heart becomes a pathway. You know, when people interact with you, your heart becomes, they're interacting with not just a person, but with a highway to Zion. With a person who has connection to heaven. Because your heart became a pathway. I just want to encourage you every single day, every single service, every time you step into a moment where you are interacting with the Lord or where you have an opportunity to worship, to give him your best strength. Because you'll always get more out of it than you gave. And you'll find that the things that you need are all of a sudden taken care of because you said, God, I'm going to focus on you. The enemy always wants you to come into a place like this and focus on your needs only and on yourself only. And then when you do that, what do you get when you look at yourself? You don't get much encouragement, do you? And so you walk out and be like, man, I didn't get much out of that service. And it's the enemy saying, I'm going to take your attention off of where you'll actually get your strength. And your strength comes when you say, God, I'm putting all my strength in you. I'm not, going to, I'm not worried about me because I know you have enough care for me to take care of all my needs. Blessed are those who strengthen in you. And all of a sudden, your heart becomes a highway to Zion and a place where the grace and the glory comes down and a place where there's life and refreshment. I love that. Number three, planted. You're planted for purpose. I love, this is, anytime you read a scripture where the writer, and this happens a lot in the Old Testament, where the writer will have double meanings or uh, be painting a picture with words that sound similar or trying to bring the light bulb on by repeating different things. And this is a spot where that happens. And when we look at verse six, I want you to see this. It says, as they go through the valley of Baca. Now, Baca may not mean much to you, but the people would know that this is a place of dryness. This is a desert place. This is a place where not much is happening in the way of life. Maybe you know of a valley of Baca, a place where you just need a refreshment, a place where you just need some life. Well, as you dwell in the house and you're planted in the house and you put your strength in God, then something begins to happen, not just for you, but for the people around you and the situations around you that are dry. If you're dry, it starts there. As you say, God, I don't wanna just be here, I wanna be planted. Yes. 
I don't wanna just be here, I wanna receive from you. God, I don't wanna just be here, but I wanna give you my best strength and I want your strength to come into me because there's a dryness and God, truly in those places, you're like, that's a place where you need a miracle. That's a place where you need God to work. That's a place where you need God to bring refreshment and life. But watch what happens as they go through the Valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs the early rain also covers it with pools. So a spring is, a, is, a, is a, obviously a life-giving source. It's a constant source of water. But what's interesting here, and you don't just, just naturally catch it just reading the English version, but the word for pools is baraka. So as they go through baka, they make it a baraka. Baraka means blessing. I think that's so cool that all of a sudden this place that was dry becomes a place of blessing. The place where nothing grows, the place where you thought it was a lost cause, the place where you said, I don't know if God can move here, the place where you said it's over, the place where you said it's done, the place where you said, I don't know, it would take a miracle, it's very dry. If you saw it, you would say nothing will grow there. As they are planted and as they find their strength in God and they put their strength in Him, they go through that type of place and it becomes a place of springs it becomes a place of pools. It becomes a place of blessing. You know what's cool about the Bible is if you're an artist, this scripture was written with a picture for you. It was written with this visual of a dry desert all of a sudden becoming a place of pools in life. But if you're a linguist, or maybe not such an artist, the writer also planted something there for you and said, you know what, I'm just gonna lay, lay the cookies on the bottom shelf for you, all right? This place becomes, the dry place becomes a place of blessing. And so wherever you're at and however you need God to speak to you, he planted it right in his word. And he's not just blessing you, but I, I, I think it's cool that he's saying, you know what, it's just, and it's all over scripture. When I bless you, you're gonna become a blessing to others. You're gonna walk in places that are dry and you're gonna bring life. You're gonna walk into your workplace and it's gonna become a place of life. You know that's God's heart for you. Maybe you've kind of written yourself out of the story or maybe you've said, you know, those life-giving people, that's a, that's a different set of people. I'm not one of those. Or especially when it comes to spiritual things, you're like, I'm not, I'm not as spiritual as some other people, or I'm not as spiritual as my wife, or I'm not as spiritual as my husband. I just wanna encourage you to take a moment and to stop writing that label over your life and to say, you know what? If I just get planted, and if I just put my strength in God, He can use anybody. And in that place where I thought I couldn't bring any life, God's gonna use me to bring life. I'm gonna start to make a place of springs. And it's not an effort thing, and it's not a trying thing. It's because you became a highway to Zion. It's just a planted thing because there's power in being planted. And but I think, I hope that you understand this, that you can't just walk in and sit and say, all right, I'm here, I'm planted. No, planted says, man, I gotta get those roots down and I gotta get some of those nutrients and I gotta be all here if I'm gonna receive all that God has for me. God never said, you know what? You just sit there and I'll make it happen. He said, you give your life to me and you'll find your life. You come to me, those who come to me, I'll never cast out. You know what, ask and you will receive. Be planted, dwell in, be in the house, be in God's presence, put your strength in me and you'll be blessed. And that's when you start to see the life start to flow through you. So there's some power in saying, God, I want that. And God, I'm willing to go for it because I need it. We all do, every single person, every person watching online, every person in this room needs a refreshment, needs the strength of the Lord. That's what makes the passage so relevant. So every person needs to be planted. 
Today, I really want to encourage you right now to order New Normal on Amazon or wherever books are sold. You can pick up one for yourself, a friend, or a family member because God wants you to live in a land that's full of His promise and possibility. And we believe this book will help you on your journey to a new normal. We also have an amazing study guide available on Amazon so you can go through the book with a small group, your spouse, or even friends at a coffee shop so you can get the most out of this amazing resource. As you go throughout your day, this is our prayer for you. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May He smile on you and be gracious to you. May He show you His favor and give you His peace. God bless.